So if you followed along and you eventually logged into this screen, this is the WordPress dashboard. Um, and perhaps it seemed relatively easy because I'm here helping you out and you're following my instructions, but obviously when you go home, suddenly I'm not there to help you. So let's do something here that's a little bit more like as if you were at home. If you see the Howdy Admin at the very top right, just hover your mouse on it, don't click it, but hover your mouse and click Log Out. And then close the web browser completely. Because when you go home, you're not already logged in like we did. It's not already ready to go like we just did together. So close your web browser, close everything. Everything that you don't really need. You can leave your notes up, of course, but I'm just closing everything. Just so that you get your empty desktop. So, whatever web browser we had a moment ago, let's go to Firefox. Doesn't matter the web browser, but I'm just showing you. Maybe you use Firefox at home or Safari, whatever. Just open the Firefox web browser, Mozilla Firefox there, just double click that. And now this is where your memory and your notes come in. I want to see the I want to see the WAMP server welcome screen. What was that address again? Localhost. Local Let's go to localhost. There it is. Okay. That's one thing down. I want to go back to the screen where I can edit databases. What was that address? localhost slash php my admin. There it is. There's my WordPress database right there. Now here's the here's the trickier one. What's the address to go back to the home page of the website I just created? localhost slash WordPress. Yes. We have a folder in the WW folder, in the WAMP folder, called WordPress. So we access it with localhost slash WordPress. And there's my site. Wait a minute, where does it say dashboard? And where does it say howdy? And where does it say this and that? Well, this is the front end. A moment ago, we were in the back end. We've got the user side, and we've got the developer side. This is the side that a regular person will see if this was out on the real internet. The front side, the, uh, the, the front office, the, the live side, the front end. I want to go to the back end. And by default, in a brand new WordPress site, we do, we, we do have a button that says log in, but don't click that, because eventually we want to remove this. We don't want to let anyone to log into the back end. So eventually we're going to remove this login button. So don't rely on there being a login button on your home screen. We're going to rely on what I've got in my notes and what I'll reiterate. We're going to go, this is on step, this is sheet number two, step number four, sub step B. I've got localhost slash WordPress slash WP dash admin. That's going to be your login screen always, even if it doesn't appear as a nice pretty button on your home page. You can always get back to your login screen that way. WordPress.com slash WP dash admin. On that address, make a note of it, but it's in my notes, and press enter. There's the login screen. If we're following along with the instructions I have here, we have a username and password. If you're making up your own username and password, then log in with the one you made up. I don't know what it is, and I cannot retrieve it. If you're following my instructions, the username is admin, and the password is password, with a capital P. Unless you didn't put a capital P, then it's not a capital P. <coughs> Admin, password, capital P, login. If it doesn't work, I don't know how I can help you. You typed this in 10 minutes ago. Maybe you wrote it down. 
if you didn't follow my instructions exactly. So um, click login. And now we've got the dashboard. Question? I tried to pull the link, but I couldn't pull Which part are you at? Uh, from the, I tried to log in your local host, but it's not so up. Did you try this address first? Okay, so here we are in the dashboard, the back end, front end, back end. The front end is what the regular user will see, and the back end is what you will see as the administrator. We want to get into the habit of being able to switch back and forth because the user will not see this. Hopefully the user is not seeing this. That means you got hacked. We want to transition between back and forth, back end, front end. Pretty easy to do. If you hover your mouse at the top left corner where it says the name of your site, hover your mouse there, you'll see visit site. So try that. Hover over the name of your site, whatever it is, and click visit site. There's the front end, just like before. Because I'm logged in, it has a strip at the top here of administrator buttons. If you're not logged in, it will not show up. But I'm at the front end, and then I can test the site, see how it runs, etc. I want to get back to the dashboard to continue to edit. I want to get back to the back end. So again, hover over the name of your site, dashboard. And here's a secret. If you simply click on the name of your site, it switches you back and forth between the two. But I'm usually going to say, go to Dashboard or go to Visit Site. So the dashboard is like your back end? Right? The dashboard is the back end, the control panel, where you have all that access to all your files and the products and everything. So that is that is um, how we navigate back and forth between uh, the two aspects of the site. You're going to be in the dashboard to change your home page, to change your theme, to add a product, to update prices, to see your sales, and you will go to the front end, visit site, to see what it looks like. For people. The first thing that we see here under the dashboard, there's a bunch of menu items, but we're under the dashboard under home. And then on the right side here we have different little modules. Dashboard, welcome to WordPress. And so here there's a quick button to customize, we'll look at that later. Next step, maybe write a blog post, add an about page, view your site, widgets, Etc. That's some useful stuff there that we'll look that we'll look at at a glance. It tells you how many posts you have, pages, products. I'll talk about this, but there's a difference between a post and a page. A big difference. The cool thing about WordPress is that it has the ability built in for people to comment on your site. This was so requested in the old days of Dreamweaver. Please make me a site and have the ability for people to comment on my site. It was doable, but very complicated. Here in WordPress, it's built in and turned on, which may or may not be a good thing. We've got a theme, which is a design of our site. Oh, look at that. We've recently got one comment. Mr. WordPress commented on our site. We can quickly add a new blog post on the right side. I'll talk about what posts and pages are, of course. WordPress News. Actually, WordPress 4.3 is available, and we're running 4.2.4. We're going to update later. Don't do it yet. But this is one of these things about being a WordPress administrator. Just like 
your phone gets an update once in a while and you hate how it changes. Just like once in a while your Mac updates or your Windows computer updates and you hate the new changes. Um, WordPress updates and changes too. Uh, not without your permission though. So um, we'll talk about the whole world of updates. Uh, that's a deeper topic which we'll get to later. But that'll be one of the things we need to deal with as an administrator. There's a bunch of screens here, but I want to jump to one of these important ones first. Uh, if you hover your mouse over any of these, you might get a pop-up menu. But you hover your mouse over Settings, and then click General. We're going to look at some of the settings. Usually people dive right in to start using WordPress without really pulling back the curtain to see what's going on and all the power that it has. So hover over Settings and go to General. This is where you can change the name of your site. If you don't want Victor's Bakery, you want Victor's Original Bakery. You can change that. There's a tagline here. In a few words, explain what the site is about. Mine says just another WordPress site, just like yours. So an amateur mistake is never changing that. And I'll be touching on these things throughout the course, but there's a lot to be said about SEO. How many of you heard of SEO before this class? few people. How many of you have heard of search engine optimization? Same thing. SEO is search engine optimization, which is what are all of the things I need to do on my site to get found by the search engines? Because I might have built a great website and have a bunch of products, but if no one comes to my site because the search engines don't know that I exist, what good is my site? That's a whole can of worms in a class that I teach starting next month. Look for the SEO class, Search Engine Optimization class. But I'll mention things about it here and there. One of the things about SEO is to have a good tagline. A tagline is a sentence that explains what your site is about and that hopefully uses keywords about what your site is. Again, in the SEO class we talk about the importance of keywords but keywords are between three and ten words that define what your site is about. And therefore, you want to use those keywords throughout your site. I'm not saying think of ten words that define what your site is and stuff them all right here. That's not good SEO. Good SEO is that I think of a sentence, a human readable sentence, that defines my site that uses one or two of those keywords, not all ten. That's keyword stuffing. So, Victor's Bakery. Uh, I've brainstormed with my, with my company that the keywords are uh, East Lake, which is where it's located at, um, gluten-free, um, you know, family-owned. We've brainstormed. What are the keywords that define our site? Because when someone searches Google, they're not just going to search bakeries. They're going to search for bakery and a zip code. Bakery and homemade recipe. Bakery in Eastlake. People are going to search a specific topic. And that's what the art and science of SEO is. Figuring out keywords and other topics to get found. So here, on my fake site, I'm going to write a sentence like family-owned bakery in the heart of Eastlake. That kind of sentence hits my keywords, is readable by regular people. If someone is searching for a couple of these, family, bakery, or bakeries in Eastlake, I'm hitting some of those keywords that people could be searching for. Again, this is a whole can of worms, SEO, choosing your right words and phrases and such. But think about it that way. What would someone search for? What would you search for? If you're looking for shoes, do you just search for shoes? No, you probably search for, I don't know, Jimmy Choo Shoes Affordable, right? If they, if they exist. And so you're going to think of those keywords. If your company is a very esoterically named company in that, what the heck does PMD Interactive do? I cannot tell by the name. <laughs> Definitely use that tagline to explain Use your keywords, but also 
here uh, web marketing company in San Diego the name of my company doesn't make much sense but now with the tagline it does and that's full of keywords that people can search for through the search engines as much detail as, say, like, you can create a big Sure. Or is that way too much detail? There is going to be a limit. This screen doesn't quite tell you what that limit is because you can go on and on like this off the edge. There's another screen elsewhere that, that will help us that we'll talk about to craft that a little better. But I would say if you're getting close to the end of that box, it's a little too much. Because that's the market in itself. I just thought yes. that would be useful for someone searching for gluten free. Um, yeah. That's that whole art and the science. For the moment I would say try to keep it within that box. If it goes further than that it might be too long because there are limits. At a certain point the search engines will think we're being spammy and we're putting too many keywords, too much text. It's it's a tightrope that we have to walk of SEO. WordPress address and site address don't worry about that that's technical uh, email address if you need to add another email address that's where it is look at this membership another thing that's built in in the old days if I wanted people to register to get access to my site that was complicated programming here on WordPress a click of a button lets people register for your site what exactly does the membership this basic one is free and not that full featured, but for some people it's enough. Later on, we can look at other plugins that will allow us to enhance that, which we can do for free registration or paid registration, like a subscription. So, if you're using your site like the bakery as an example, what would people potentially register for, and what would their experience be with the features of this? I could, I could have a, an exclusive section where I'm giving away like uh, nutrition tips. Well, not giving away, but I, I could have an exclusive section about nutrition tips and how to make your own gluten-free recipes and such. So that way people can register. And if I further set it up, then uh, I can sell subscriptions to that. How it actually looks, well, I can design that on another screen, a login screen. And it'll be the whole process of please put a name and an email address and a password like a full featured registration screen. So it's like a, like an organization that has members and they join that organization they have certain privileges. You could do that but it's not going to be as powerful as, as you might think because notice here the new user when they register are they a subscriber, contributor, author, administrator. So if we want other kinds of login abilities that's going to be a plugin. Assume that somewhere else on another page, then you can assign what pages are accessible. Yeah. Yes. Time zone. Are we currently in UTC zero? True or false? Where in the world is UTC zero? Greenwich. Greenwich Mean Time. London. No, we are not in London. What's our UTC offset? Any nerds here? Eight at the moment. Let's make it easy. Los Angeles. Question. Minus eight. Yeah, I think it's minus eight at the moment unless we've got the daylight savings time and we're minus seven. But let's just choose here Los Angeles. We're in the wrong time zone. Um, this will, if we're not in the right time zone and you get notifications and such, you'll get them at the wrong time. So what? a quick shortcut here because there's so many cities here. Click on the little box to activate it and start typing LOS. That'll jump you to Los Angeles. Date format you can change if you'd like, and time format. These are fine for me, but if you're international, you might want to use the wrong ones, I mean, the other ones. What else? Time zone. Quite a second choice for time format, though. <laughs> it's. I suppose it's uh, a choice. I don't know which one is more wrong or right, but yeah, that's true. I, I often see capital PM. But in any event, whatever one you like, you can activate. Uh, 
or your own custom one. You can then choose your week starts on. Sometimes you see this as Sunday is the week that the, the week starts. It doesn't quite matter usually, but you can change that. And site language. What's the site? The site written in? Is, is it in English? Is it in Japanese? Etc. So any changes that you might make here, make sure then you click Save Changes. Any questions on this screen? Under the settings, I'm going to jump over to reading. There's not too much really to talk about under writing. Jump to reading. Lots of important things here. So let me show you three websites uh, to answer this question here. WordPress is very powerful, but the default is that it will create a site that is like a classic blog. A classic blog is a website that someone visits, and it's got the latest post, the latest article at the top, and then there's one before it and one before it, and the design of course may change, but what I'm saying is the latest content pushes down the older content. That's a classic blog style. So then I run out of articles and then there's older posts. So then on the next screen I see more posts right there, and then I keep going and there's more and more and more, and then so this is a classic blog style, and that's what the default of WordPress is. The one we just installed is going to behave like that. WordPress can also be used like this. This is another client of ours. We seem to get a lot of tasty clients. And what this one is, is a more of a static home page. Not that it's static in, the, in that it doesn't, the home page is not like a blog. Not static is that there's that there's no slideshow. There's a slideshow, there's an about page, home, menu, contact, Yelp reviews and such. I can go over to the about page and see about the owners of the restaurant. There's that slideshow up there. Great. But this is more, this is the other side of the WordPress coin, a static website. Maybe perhaps a more traditional kind of website. A blog is its content on the home page changes all the time. A static page is that, you know, you might have the slideshow, but it's not really changing. We're not going to change this address and, and the text and such all the time. Those are the two extremes. Static and blog. In the middle, WordPress can do that as well, and that's what the Texcoco site is. It's got mostly a static home page with a blog here. We've just updated these blogs recently. So that one's a hybrid. It's got static content and updated content, blog content. WordPress can do all three. I have to look it up. Um, it starts with a B. Remind me during the lab and I'll look it up, but um, it's a good one. Yeah, the people that photograph this know what they're doing. Yes. They would be updating their specials probably, but I, I, in the SEO class, we talk in there that it is important the search engines really favor that a site has a blog. So, uh, and then I teach a class on blogging, or I go into that also. And so just about any site could have a blog, and it's recommended for SEO. So doing your updates on the home page, you know, a quick update is fine, but using a blog is even better. But probably those updates won't, those, you know, those latest meals updates won't really lend themselves exactly to a blog. 
get an example from this site here about how does this site use the blog. They advertise press releases and such, they, adver they, they blog about the food itself and the culture and cuisine. So think about how you can use a blog because nowadays the search engines are really giving you precedence over your competitors or preference over your competitors if you have a blog. Yes? Regarding the question about the theme, uh, you can look at the source file mm -hmm. and you can, that reveals the theme. If you see a website that you like, you can look at the source file and see what theme they use. That's right. You can always look at the source code of a particular site. So on this question here about why, what are we looking at here? This is where you choose which kind of site do you want. The default, your latest posts. So it's going to show the latest blog post that you've added automatically. The other that I showed you of Italianissimo, that's the one, the Italian site, that's the one that is the static one. That needs a little bit of setup though, because if you select it, it says, okay, what would you like to display on the front page? I don't have a home page page to use. And then it says, where would you like to put your posts? I don't have a blog page to put my blog posts. So we can't quite do it at the moment. We're going to leave it on posts, and later on, as we build the site a little bit more, we'll come back to the screen and set it up this way. The Texcoco site, which is a hybrid, is, is a mixture of the two. Unfortunately, there's no button that says, give me a hybrid site. That is related to setting up the appropriate option here and the customized theme. That's more advanced. I can't exactly show you how did we do this Texcoco site to make it hybrid. That has to do with the theme and other programming, which we'll get to. But if you just quickly want a blog site, WordPress gives you a blog site right away. If you want a static site like this, WordPress gives you that ability. It needs a little bit of setup, which we will get back to. It will affect things, yes. Um, usually when you download a theme, it has some sort of documentation. You want to read its documentation because some will tell you, leave it on latest blog post, but it'll still give you a hybrid site. And some will say, make sure you change it to static for it to fully work. So always read the documentation. We'll get to blogging a little bit more, so don't worry about option, these two options about pages, don't worry about that for each article. No. Don't worry about that either. Yes? Are there uh, limits, uh, limits when uh, WordPress is to how many pages you, your blog can have, or is it better to just keep, let's see how many pages can you earn, and then you have to erase some of the uh, entries? There is a limit to my knowledge, but it's so high that you're not really going to reach it. I believe my colleague told me that eventually, I believe at 100,000, uh, then you'll have trouble. And now for most of us, that's not a problem. But for big e-commerce sites, Amazon.com has more than 100,000 pages. Every page is a product. Every product is a page. So at a certain point, WordPress can't quite handle it. And then we've got other software to... to to take the place. But for most of us, we're, we'll never reach WordPress limits, really. Search engine visibility, this is where we turned on that option, and you can change it later. I didn't really change anything here. I can't yet, so I'm not going to click Save. But if you did make a change here, remember to save. Any questions on this screen? What is the this It means that the search engines will not pay attention to you. Maybe you're working on your site live, but you don't want the search engines to see you yet. Because people can still visit it. People, if they know their, your address, they can still type victorsbakery.com and see you working on your site. This is about the, the, the search engines not paying attention. People can still go. And notice it really says it's up to the search engines to honor this request, still. Mm -hmm. Disclaimer. Yes. Let's go over to discussion section. Here's an SEO freebie. 
One of the things that helps your SEO is to have links to your site. If some other site links to your site, that's good. What's better is some other site that you have no control over. So in the old days, what people would do was they would buy 10 websites and link them all together. And that would help your SEO because the search engines would see, look at all of these web of connections. This must be a great site. Let's, up, let's put it higher than the competitor. But then if us, that we're all honest, try to do that, what about the people, what about the spammers that bought a thousand websites and linked them all together? So eventually the search engines said, okay, we're going to take more precedence and preference for other websites that this company does not control. So, for example, Texcoco, there's a link there from Travel Channel, Italianissimo. There's links there from, you know, the Chamber of Commerce and such. There's links from other websites that these companies don't control. The search engines value that much more highly than your website linking to your other website linking to your other website. So I want to attempt to notify any blogs linked from mine. I want to turn on, I recommend turn on this first option. This is basically, if I link to someone else's website, let that website know I linked to them. Well, you, you might say, but you just said you want, web, you want links from their site to my site. Yes, they're not going to know your site exists unless you let them know. So if you're linking to some other you know, bakery, if I'm linking to another food site, a food blogger, let's say, if I link to another food blogger, WordPress will let them know you've got a new link. That food blogger may then say, okay, let me check out that site. I like what they're about. Let me write a blog post and link back to them. That'll help my SEO. And this is a form of, I call it phishing, not in a negative way, but I'm trying to get links back to my site. So I'm phishing, I'm putting bait out there. I'm linking to other sites. Hopefully they will link to me. Most likely they won't, but some percent will, and those that do link back to me will help my SEO. Yes? When we make an article and such, I will show you that we can add a picture or text and make a link to another site. Mm -hmm. Technically, we're helping them, but you have to give in order to get. If those other sites don't know we exist, we're going to have a hard time getting links. So one tactic is to link to other sites, and yes, we'll be helping their SEO, and maybe we linked to 10 sites and two of them link back. That's still a 20% ratio of linking back, which is good. So uh, it's part of the whole process of helping your SEO. Yes? Is there any issue with um, the channel, you have permissions, just like in the music industry, where there's rights and entitlements? That's a, that's a huge uh, answer. All the time. Yes, this is such a wild west at the moment. You've probably heard about record companies suing little kids for downloading music, literally. And so you might think, well, if I link the Travel Channel, will they go after me? It's really a gray area. It really, it really depends. Because you've got a website, Travel Channel wants people to visit the website. Travel Channel wants people to watch the TV show. People, Travel Channel wants people to click the ads. So if we're giving free publicity to Travel Channel to link back to Travel Channel, Travel Channel might be okay with that. We don't know. There might be a disclaimer somewhere on the site that says, please seek permission, please do not link. I don't know. It's really on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, Is this policy just due to a question or is it just It's just so malleable. I can't really give you a best practice. In, I can only tell you what we've done in our company. We don't ask. We just link. We've never had a problem because we're giving them free publicity. They want that. And if there's a problem, then okay, we'll take it down. And they know where to find it. Because we've turned on their attempt to notify. Yeah. Uh, just a moment, question here. The second, are we on the second bullet or are we still on the first? This was the first one. This was yeah. off by default, and I turned it on because I recommended it. You're going to explain the second one, right? Simply that you want to leave it on because that's allowing uh, I want to get the same thing I want to get a notification from the other site that they linked to me that's what that's telling me and it's on by default and that's 
what helps my SEO, that I've got links from other sites to my site. Um, Question? Yes, and then uh, you might have to escalate it further. Hopefully, if you've got trademarks and copyrights and other more legal stuff, then you escalate the issue saying, you're violating my copyright, monetary damages are forthcoming, and so forth. Question here? Yes. Um, just from when um, somebody uh, referred and linked to my site, how do I know? We're going to have a link over here. Um, where is it at? Uh, so I know they, they, they link, but do I know the name? Or yes. The address and You'll get the address of the website, not exactly the name of the person and such, but the, the name of the website and the address of the website and all of that. It's in one of these over here. I think it's under comments. You're gonna see you're gonna see that. And also over on the some other screen. But yes, you, we will be able to see that within our dashboard. Uh, allow people to post comments on new articles. That's what I'm saying. The ability for people to comment on our site. Um, if you want that, it's very easy to turn that on or off. SEO wise this is sort of, in my opinion, changing. Uh, I don't believe it was very, very important for, for the search engines anyway for people to comment on your site simply because you probably know about how comments can quickly degenerate into flame wars and arguments and all of that unless there's a moderator. So I think the search engines are indicating that comments have a value, but it's not one of the biggest values to help your SEO. But if you do want people to comment, you can turn it on there. And then you want to make sure you've got the option, I'm going to skip a little bit and I'll come back. Before a comment appears, comment must be manually approved. Turn that one on if you turned on the one letting people comment. Because without that one on, and notice it's off by default, any crazy person can write any crazy thing. Well, at least here, if you turn it on, you can see that crazy thing and delete it before it goes on your site. <laughs> You'll get an email from your site that says a brand new comment. You'll get a preview of the comment, and you'll get three options. Approve, deny, spam. So right from your email, you can click spam, and it'll never show up on your site. You can click you know, not approve. I forget, if, I forget if it's not approve or delete. Um, but you can do it all from the phone. You can click apply. Uh, you can click approve right on the phone and then it shows up on your site. So if you are going to allow comments on your products or in your message boards and on all of that stuff, I would highly recommend you turn on comments must be manually approved. Now you're going to need to be a comment moderator and that may take up a lot of your time. I'm just trying to sell stuff. But now you've got that. And again, it might not be that useful anyway, according to the search engines. Things are moving much more to social media. So, comment is held for moderation. So email me whenever someone posts a comment, self-explanatory, comment is held for moderation. Let me know that there's a comment. Let me approve it manually. So all of these options that are on here are fine. Email me whenever and before a comment, those are good. <coughs> Under other comment settings, you've got users must be registered and logged in to comment. This is up to you to decide. But have you ever visited a website, you read something, you wanted to comment, you had a great idea for a reply, you click the reply button and it says please log in or please register. So okay, let me register. So you go through the process of registering and it sends you an email to confirm. So okay, I'm going to go to my email to confirm. I'm already getting annoyed. I click on that. I click on that approval link and something happens, so forget it, and I never comment. So that's known as friction. The user's getting friction to accomplish something. The more friction a user gets, the least likely they will buy your product. So if your shopping cart is very complicated, a lot of friction, people will just say forget it and go to Amazon. 
So if people are, if you want people to comment, but you force them to register and log in, and there could be failure points there, they're going to say forget it, and then they won't comment. We've already got the protection of manually approved. So I sort of recommend they don't need to register and log in. Because anyway, over here, we did not let people register. So if we turn on the option, people must register, but we never let people register, you'll have no comments. You'll say, why is my website a ghost town? These other ones are fine, don't worry about it. Comment moderation, everything is good. Blacklist, if there are certain keywords that you want to block, you can set that up. Avatars, these are the icons of people. You can set that up whatever you'd like. What's the rating of your site so that you don't get, in, get into any legal trouble? Save changes. We're going to skip the media screen. That's pretty self-explanatory. The big difference in WordPress, if you've used other software like Dreamweaver, is that in Dreamweaver, I had to manage my, my folder structure. I had to create a folder for images. And inside of images, I created a folder for slideshow. And then I created other folders. I had to manage all my media. WordPress, you just upload all your content to WordPress and it manages it for you. You just tell it uh, some basic settings, but it will it will keep track of everything for you. So don't worry about media and permalinks. It seems really technical, and I'll let you know something pretty important. Currently. Okay, the address that we were at the top is localhost slash WordPress. So let's say I had victorsbakery.com, and then I had a blog. So probably it would be victorsbakery.com slash blog, or maybe I had victorsbakery.com slash about us. I had an address, a URL scheme that made sense, that was readable, memorable, Oftentimes the default in WordPress is that you're going to have, for example, victorsbakery.com and the, uh, the about page is defined as question p equals 1, 2, 3. And the products page might be victorsbakery.com slash question p equals 5, 5, 2, 3. The entry in the database, which is right here, the default. So your WordPress may be set up as the default, which gives me the entry in the database, which is not SEO friendly. What's SEO friendly is any of the other ones. Actual words, readable words. Numeric is not useful either. Default and numeric are not useful, but day and name, month and name, and post name and custom are useful because those are readable by people. And the search engines really tell us, optimize your site for people, not for the machines, not for the search engines, not for the dumb algorithm, for people. So if you have a WordPress, if you've had a WordPress for a year before this class, go check out that screen. And if that still says default, you're not getting the best setup possible. You want, in my opinion, post name. That's the one or day and name and month and name, but you want words, you want real words, you want victor.com slash top 10 cookies, victor.com slash the best WordPress links. You know, you want words, that's how the search engines find you, not numbers. Your blog post called number 1758 is meaningless to Google, but your article called how to set up WordPress, Google will love that. Yahoo will love that. So here I would say let's activate post name and click save. Don't worry about category base and tag base. This is a big tip that I can give you for SEO. 
this custom structure. I can even look at it. Really, I recommend the posting. So if you're doing a static page, it might show up. This will still help you, yes. Your static page, once you set up an about page or a contact page, this will automatically then rename everything to the correct names. Because it's all just entries in a database to WordPress. Now we just change something in the database that said this equals that, and now it's this equals this, and everything changes automatically. This one, um, I usually don't use it. I usually don't use it, but if you need the addresses of your site to be in a specific format, that's what you would do with it. I usually don't do this, so I can't give you the best opinion of it, but most of the time you want this post name. <coughs> Yes. If you're not using, you know, if you were to go to a previous page where it asked if somebody wanted a status page or not, mm. right? And then you would choose, uh, instead of the post name, which would be the blog post, you would choose the other page as our, um, as our default setting, or mm. as our equivalent setting, common setting? You mean, you mean here? Yeah. So, if we're not using the latest post of the front page, would we then, on this permalink setting page, choose a different um, common setting? Um, th you'll still be fine if you use post name, even if you keep it on latest yeah. post. Okay. Uh -huh. and, uh, and, and the month and name is often very common in, uh, in blogs. Okay. So if you're focused just on blogging, month name or day name a little better but still you'll be fine with post name so there's still a lot to talk about but class is almost over so what we'll do is we still have three more class meetings we're still ac getting acclimated with all of this what you need to do is uh, we're gonna end the main lecture in just a moment um, and I'm gonna mention something I, I always forget um, this class and most of the classes that I teach there's no assignments there's no grades that means there's no certificates and there's none of that this is really more about what you get out of these classes so you're not going to turn in this work and anything like that you are going to apply this because most of you want to get something tangible out of these classes to apply to a real business so I recommend when we finish today and you go home try to do steps one I mean sheets one, two, and three. We're going to take it up from step three or sheet three next time. But you try to do one, two, and three, at least one and two, which is what we did together. And so you want to set up WAMP or MAMP and get acclimated with localhost and PHP my admin and such. You can do all of this. It's free. You can do it at home. So I recommend you do that at home by the time we come back because we're going to do it again. Um, after next time, when we come back next time, we're going to do it again from scratch. We're going to create the database, set up WordPress again, and we'll start again. So anything that we did here doesn't matter. It's going to get deleted. Um, but when we come back next time, we're going to do it again, but then we're going to save it. Because you cannot simply drag your folder to your flash drive. The folder of www inside of WAMP. If you simply think, well, I'll just drag that www folder to my flash drive. It will not work. There's a database here. There's so many tentacles interconnected that simply dragging this folder will not work. Um, so we're going to lose what we've done at the moment. That's okay. We didn't get that far. We're going to need to do parts of it again next time. But then at the end of the day next time, I'm going to go to sheet number four, which is to make a perfect copy of your site to take home. Because once you know that on sheet number four, you will be able to make a perfect copy on your site on your real live server copy it into WAMP and work on it, play with it, break it on the local host. When that's then working properly, we make that copy and we take it back to the server. That's the process that my company does. 
and it's all going to be on sheet number four. But we'll try again from the beginning. It'll go faster the second time. Hopefully you, you'll see it for a second time, and I recommend you do it again at home so you get a little more practice. And we'll end the main lecture, do a little bit of lab time. Usually we end at 3.30, but this is obviously so much fun, we're out of time. <laughs> question? Yes. I have a question, yeah. So it says that the lead form we may have been adding an edit to the end. So then next, during, between this week and next week, do you recommend that we go online and look at all the different teams available on the stuff? And then no. do you have a recommendation for what to look for? No, we'll still be able to do it together. Okay. Anything that I might have not have gotten at the moment, we have the time. Uh, so I would just um, tell you to explore a little online if you'd like about themes, but I'll definitely talk about it next time. Okay. So that's it for the moment. When we come back next time, we will keep going and keep learning WordPress. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.